and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about basically being a tourist in my home area. I've been up to lots of fun stuff this summer with my friends, so I'm going to be updating you on all of that. But before we begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to this sponsor of the podcast, Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK, but they also ship all over the world. And at the moment, Red Post have a summer sale with up to 70% off. So be sure to go on there, pick up some bargains. There might be some things that you need to restock on. There might be some things that you find you're like, well, that is so pretty because it's over lots of different stuff. So children's wear, women's wear, men's wear, horse wear, all the wares. Um, anyway, so go and check it out at redpostequestrian.co.uk. Anyway, let's get in to today's episode. So summer this year in the UK hasn't really been summering until last week. Last week, I actually had a little bit more of a chilled week. So as you guys know, I've been busy working in Germany like a few weeks ago, and then I've been busy catching up on lots of different stuff. So had a bit of a chilled week last week, which was actually really nice. I got to catch up with a lot of friends, do a lot of fun things. So one of the first things that we did was we went to the beach. Now, um, Obviously, for personal reasons, I do not say where I live on the internet in case some weird people come and say hi to me at my house uninvited because that's just weird. But anyway, um, so but I'm very lucky that where we are, we're not too far away from the sea, actually. And I feel like we don't really go to the beach that often. I go mostly to the beach, actually, with the horses and take them there for a ride. But, you know, with your friends and things, it's something that you kind of only really do in the summer. So we had a beach evening the other day and oh my goodness, it was so good. The weather was hot, it was sunny, um, it was so pretty as well. And also, I just wanna say, the sea was warmer than my holiday or my trip to Nice. The British Sea, although no, it's not really called that, but the British Channel, there we go, um, it was warmer. It was warmer than Nice, so that was a bit of a shock. Also, um, all of my friends were like, hmm. They're like, everyone brought their beat, like their swimming stuff just in case. And everyone was like, hmm, I don't know if I want to go in the water or not. And you guys know, I loved swimming seats. So I was the first person in and um, we, our local beach is a pebble beach. And the stones are smaller than the ones in Nice. Because the ones in Nice, oh my gosh, I said before, but you had to kind of like crawl. It just, the size of the pebbles, they were big enough that you kind of had to like wrap your foot around each, and I don't know, it just really hurt your feet. It was, like I am a gravel drive child. Like there's, I don't know if anybody's seen the memes or the like jokes about if you were a gravel chi- gra- gravel drive child, then you can walk on anything. Like walking barefoot, easy, but oh my gosh, those rocks are nice. No, thank you. But anyway, um, our local Pebble Beach, I think is the best beach because you don't get sand ev- anywhere. But anyway, um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go in. The one thing that you do have to be careful of um, in our kind of area, to be fair, I don't think I've heard of anyone getting this, but you never know. You always hear the horror stories every now and again, is there's something called weaver fish in the UK that you have to be careful of. Now, as I said before, in the UK, we don't really have any dangerous animals. All of our animals are absolutely pathetic. You know, we don't have, um, you know, any kind of really scary uh, spiders that are normal. I mean, there might be the, the old, you know, there's no sharks or anything like that, but we do have something called weaver fish. And not many people, no, um, some of my friends were like, I don't really know what you're going on about, Ez, are you sure you're not just making this up? And at first I forgot they were called weaver fish and I was like, you've got to be careful of the weevil fish. <laughs> <laughs> they are not weevil fish, they're weevil fish. And basically they live kind of they in the on the bottom of the sea and sometimes if you step on them they have like spines, I'm pretty sure, that can go into your feet and release a toxin and that can be very painful. I'm pretty sure the um not the diagnosis, the kind of the antidote, <laughs> although it's not really like poisonous or anything. But what you're supposed to do if that happens, I've heard, is put your feet in boiling water or like not boiling water, but very, very hot water. And apparently, don't do this. Everyone's going to be like, okay, yes, me, I put my feet in boiling water. So yes, disclaimer, do not put your feet in boiling water, put them in hotter hot hot water apparently or i'm i'm not a doctor so maybe consult google or WikiHow or that kind of thing although my dad used to be a doctor so he says yes put it in put put your feet in hot water if you ever get stung by a weaver fish so there we go so what i would recommend if you are on like a pebble beach like that where there are weaver fish is get yourself a pair of 
crocs or croc like shoes there are other there are other shoes available on the market <laughs> um but yeah i was that kid that always had like a pair of like jelly kind of shoes that i would wear in the water to be fair i actually one of the best purchases i made this was ages ago when i had a work trip to australia back in 2019 i bought myself now these shoes you're gonna laugh at me but like esme these sound like the ugliest thing ever but they are croc trainers they're light grey and they, they do have like laces like a trainer, but they have holes in and they're made of plastic and they might be a little bit ugly, but I tell you what, they are number one, so comfortable. And also number two, you can wear them in the sea and don't have to worry about them floating away because as a kid, obviously we would go to the beach a lot in the summer and I would wear my Crocs. But every now and again, if you would be swimming in them, even if they were in sports mode, you got, if, you, if you're a Croc lover, you will know what sport mode is. Um, but even if they're in sport mode, sometimes the odd one would you know just it would pop up and float away and have to quickly swim after it being like no my croc um but yes all of my friends they are flip-flop people and flip-flops in the sea oh it is a big no-no it is a big no there were there were multiple times where the flip-flops accidentally went off into sea but they were all retrieved there was no there was no lost no lost flip-flops in the end but I got to the beach and I was like oh I should have brought much croc trainers uh, what a sentence that is but um so i was a bit gutted that i've got to bring them but i was fine although it did make me extra cautious and to be fair it made me get in the seawater a lot quicker because i was like i don't want my feet to touch the bottom this is giving me the heebie-jeebies i'm freaking out even though the chances of me stepping on a weaver fish is probably quite small so i just quickly you know bashed into the water and it was actually quite warm so it was all good um however however i was a little bit on edge because I was swimming in a bikini, which was a new bikini that I'd never worn before. Now, you know, if, I'm sorry, this is going to be like really in detail about women's bikinis, but you can get lots of different ones. You can get the ones with the little clips or that kind of thing. This was a stringy kind of one. You're going to be like, cool, Esme, what are you wearing to the beach? <laughs> like, I promise, I promise I was well covered up. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that sort of string bikini, but it did have like little strings to tie up. And I haven't worn like a bikini with strings for a little while. So I was swimming along and oh my gosh, I thought something brushed past my bum cheek and I screamed at the top of my lungs and I was like, oh my gosh, something's touched my bum. And then I realized it was my bikini. So that was very embarrassing and all of my friends were laughing at me because I was screaming and flailing in the water. Um, actually, a few of my friends were a little bit concerned because they thought, oh my gosh, what's got Esme? And then they were like, wait, Esme overreacts and gets very jumpy very easily. She's probably just done something stupid. And I was, I was stupid. I got scared of that. But also sometimes when you're swimming in the sea, you know, there's a bit of um, seaweed and it brushes your leg. Now that, oh my gosh, my life will flash before my eyes if that happens. So even though, like, I've never been the sort of person that's scared of like deep water. Well, I guess our, our beach is the sort of beach where it's a little bit, the water, it's, it's not like the, you know, Mediterranean or anything like that. You can't see the bottom. You can't see, it's just, it's a little, a little murky. So one thing I would say is if you do swim in the sea where we are, try not to get any in your mouth because it can make you a little bit poorly. So it was definitely a, a above, above head swimming situation but we had a lot of fun we were actually swimming in the sea for probably about 45 minutes like a good a good amount of time and I tell you what swimming is one of those things that always makes me so hungry afterwards because you don't really re especially if you're like constantly swimming and constantly trying to keep your head above the water you don't really realize that you're exercising and that it does you know uses up a lot of energy um but we were just you know bobbing away chatting that kind of thing and we had a lovely lovely time and then a few of us started to get a bit cold so we came out and one thing that I am an expert at is taking my that this is why I normally wear a bikini to the beach because I'm an expert at putting my jumper over my bikini and then being able to take my bikini top off which with the strings actually life hack is so much easier to undo and then whipping it off and being like bam in my comfy cozy jumper and then I'm also an expert at wrapping <laughs> wrapping the towel around my waist shimmying off my bikini bottoms <laughs> and then shimmying on like some jogging bottoms I'm not normally a jogging bottoms kind of gal I wouldn't really wear them out in public at home they are very comfortable but I don't know it's not really my kind of style but I gotta say 
they are the comfiest things ever. Actually, to be fair, I'd wear them quite a lot out. Like, you know, if you go to a horse show and you have like white breeches on and you want to stop them getting dirty, like I'd wear joggers over the top. But out in public, it's not really my vibe. But at the beach, when I've been in freezing cold water and I want to warm up, I tell you what, the jogging bottom life, it is for me. So I, yeah, all of my friends were like, wow, Esme, how how on earth have you managed to go from being in a bikini to being in a full on cozy set in like five minutes? And I was like, it's a skill. It is a skill. I'm, I'm One thing that I'm very good at doing with my job is being able to get changed in very weird areas, especially if we go and do like photo shoots and things in woods or getting changed in the back of a car or that kind of thing. Like I am, I'm, I can do that quite well. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was my beach experience. Oh, one thing that we did do, which probably doesn't even sound that funny, but we thought it was absolutely hilarious. So there was one guy in our friendship group and he stayed out the longest. Now he is Canadian, so we're like, you know, the cold water for him was not cold at all. He was ha- he was having fun out there. And we started to play like opera music <laughs> while he was swimming. And then we were filming little videos and putting on the group chat of him swimming to opera music. And it just looked so serene and it was, oh, it was just really funny. So there we go. Um, if you're ever bored, just put, put some interesting tunes on and anything can be cinematic in a funny kind of way. Um, so yes, that is the number one, that's n- number one activity I have done this summer, a good old beach trip. While I was actually away, I missed out, but a lot of my friends, um, they went to a local river, and if all of my friends, for some reason, decided this week is the week that we are all gonna go onto Facebook Marketplace and buy some sort of boat now boat sounds but probably not boat boat is not the word that sounds like my friends are way more fancy than they are um i would like well one of my friends bought a blow-up boat (laughs) from (laughs) online so i don't know if that really counts one bought a kayak and one i think bought a canoe i want to say so um the other weekend they all went um um yeah on the river went bobbing along which looked really fun I've seen all the videos and stuff I was working then so unfortunately I could not make it but hopefully at some time some stage this summer oh one of my other friends also has a paddleboard as well so everyone had some sort of raft or um flotation device on the river so I hopefully I will go back and do that at some stage so if you don't live near the sea there are other bodies of water available that you can go on this summer um for fun so yeah, as you guys know me, I love any sort of water sports activity. Um, I love adventuring. Uh, what else have I been up to this summer? Also, oh, I went for a lovely walk the other day on the forest with my friends. Had a good old chat, saw some like little waterfalls and that kind of thing on the way. So that was very cute. Um, there was also a lot of a lot of cows um, on the forest recently. So we were we were just kind of like watching them and they were all, like in the shade chilling. And yeah, tell you what, what is also really fun having lunch at some sort of cafe or restaurant and being by the window and there being like some sort of um kind of pathway or like you know like roads we have a, we have it a lot in the UK where towns have roads where cars don't really go down but it's still like the odd car can go down if that makes sense <laughs> um, but that is so fun for people watching oh my gosh people watching is one of the best activities especially if you're just you know sitting there eating away and you're like oh I wonder what that person's going going to do I wonder where they're going I wonder who they're meeting up with I don't know people watching in the, in the summer it's it's fun it's always good fun so that's always very cute um, what other activities have I been to? Oh, I had an away trip with work the other day. And when can I, I, I need to tell you about the place that we stayed in because that was next level. So um, normally we stay somewhere else when I go on this particular work trip. But um, we were very kindly invited to um, the person that we're working for, their like family friend's house. This house, oh my goodness, it was gorgeous I think it was Georgian it was very was it Georgian before that what's the one before that Edwardian no I don't know I've horrible histories let me down I didn't take history as a subject at school oh he's dad is looking it up for me he's he's helping me out what is it 1710 I think the house was built so there we go 1800s um but yeah that is that was it was wild honestly like these sort of places like I love 
old places. I love looking around um, like antique shops and things like that. But oh my gosh, this, this place was gorgeous. But also because we arrived in the middle of the night and it was dark, it was also very, very creepy. Now, this is somebody's home, so I don't want to be like, oh my gosh, their house was so creepy, ew, gross, disgusting, because it wasn't like that at all. It was gorgeous. It was so pretty. It was in the middle of nowhere, but you know, when you, if you arrive at anyone's house that you don't know in the middle of the night, it's going to be a little bit creepy. Um, so anyway, it was, it was a huge kind of estate house as well. And, um, I was, I was, I was a little bit scared to be sleeping in a room on my own in the middle of nowhere, but luckily my dad was there and he was in, there was, was like an interconnecting room. So he was in the room next door. So I wasn't as scared. And also I was very, very tired because we did arrive kind of in the middle of the night. And you guys know I'm the sort of person where I like to be tucked up in bed by 9pm. So it was a late night for an Esme. Um, and also because it was like a very big old house, I thought, oh no, because it's been quite warm recently. I thought I have packed the wrong pyjamas. I p packed my pyjamas that are kind of like a pair of shorts and t-shirt kind of thing. And I thought I'm going to be so cold. But I tell you what, I don't know what this duvet was made of, but I think I had probably one of the best night's sleeps in that bed ever. I, as soon as I hit the pillow, I was asleep and I was so toasty. I don't know if they had like a big full tog kind of duvet cover for the winter, but oh my gosh, it was, I was so comfortable. I slept so well. Although when we did walk in, my dad properly wind, wound me up because there was like a little trap door in the ceiling. There were loads of like wardrobes. There were loads of mystery doors that I don't know where they went. And my dad was like, oh, can you imagine like someone just like popping their head out there and freaking me out? And I was like, no, no, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. No. Um, but yes, so that is something else that I've been up to lately. Don't know if I'd recommend like putting it on your summer bucket list, go and stay in a creepy old house, but no, it was a beautiful house and I am very grateful to the people that very kindly let me and my dad stay there for the night. Talking about summer bucket lists, if any of you guys, I thought I'd update you, I always update you guys on the podcast about all the things that I'm going to be getting up to, but, um, I'm actually doing a meet and greet with Duke soon. We're going to be going to the Glenderspooner Farm World Horse Welfare which is actually where Duke is kind of originally from. So we're going to be going there. We're going to be doing a meet and greet and that is going to be on the 15th of August. So if you want to come along, be sure to go to my website, thisesme.com to find out more information about how you can book tickets to come along, come and see Duke, come and see me. So that is very exciting. And then also that week, but in a different place, I'm going to be at the Longines Global Champions Tour in London, which is at the Royal Chelsea Hospital. And that's going to be on the Saturday, which is the 17th of August. So August, apart from that, is actually quite a quiet month for me. So um, they are my kind of only really, they're my only kind of meet and greets this summer, I'd say. And then we're getting into kind of autumn. So almost, this summer has actually gone so quickly. How are we kind of like almost coming to the end of July? That is scary. I don't like it. Summer has not been summering, as I said before, but yes. So if you'd like to come along, yes, more information on my website. Going back to old things, something else that if I am ever bored, take me to an old antique shop or just take me like charity shopping or thrift shopping because it is so much fun. You can find so many bargains there and I don't know what it is, but walking around antique shops, I just find absolutely fascinating. We're very lucky that we live in a very kind of oldie woldy kind of area. So um, there are lots actually where we are and you can find some really interesting things. I love getting loads of old like paintings and things from there, which you guys, if you've watched my cottage renovation series, you'll know that I've got a few there. Although life hacks, something that I have done in my cottage is um, there's an old little book bookshop in my village and I actually bought I think three books that had like pictures of wildflowers in so I actually kind of made my own vintage kind of pictures so I cut out all the pages which I know some people are very against cutting pages out of a book they're like oh my gosh she has destroyed the book but it has meant that I have made so many kind of bits of artwork. So if you're wondering how I did this, I actually, so I cut out the pages, um, bought some frames, and then I put the pages kind of in the frames so you could see the pretty illustrations. So a book that would have been kind of on the side, never really used. Actually, the the, the books, because I kind of thrifted them, they were very cheap. I think they were between 
50 pence and one pound each. Maybe the biggest one was two pounds at a push, but I've been able to make so many pretty pieces of artwork with that as well. So that has been a great way of decorating the cottage because I'm one of those people where just a plain white blank wall that is that is not my vibe. I love to add a little bit of character and a little bit of a little bit of something. So you can definitely find some interesting things at antique shops. There are a few things that you you look at and you're like, oh, that is a little bit yikes. That is a little bit um, not welcome in 2024. So um, yes, uh, there was oh, that, what was really weird was that there's always like some old books that you can find in antique shops, and I remember me and my dad looking and <laughs> reading through one, and we were like, oh, this isn't very you know girl power. This is you know oh <laughs> you know. But yes, um, apart from that, you can find some really cute stuff. So old vases, they're always really cute to find. Um, I've found lots over the years. And there's old trugs. If you don't know what a trug is, it's kind of like a woven basket. And I always think they look really cute, especially as I have one in my dressing room at the moment. And that is my bits and bobs trug. You know, when you just have like something and you're just like, I don't really, this doesn't really have a place or it's something that you use quite often, but you don't really want to put it in a drawer because you have to go in the drawer and find it. I have a bits and bobs trug. I'm trying to think what's actually in my bits and bobs trug. I have a portable charger, which is something useful that basically all the things that I like to keep in my handbag, um, I keep in my bits and bobs trug because then when I go out, I pick this, this sounds so fancy. I'm very lucky that I do have quite a lot of different handbags because Fairfax and Favour are very generous sponsors. You can also get Fairfax and Favour available at Red Post. Sorry, had to be that person. <laughs> anyway, um, so I can choose which bag kind of goes with my outfit and then I'll get everything out of my bits and bobs trug. So what's what's what are my go-to things? I always like to have a portable charger with me just in case. Um, I like to have my, one of my favorite things at the moment is a Factor 50 spray on over makeup um, spray, like sun cream spray. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. All of my friends loved it when we went to Nice. Cause because when you've done like a full face of makeup, especially if you, if you have like a bit of a fancier day out and you don't really want to rub, you know, if rub makeup, no, rub sun cream into your makeup and then have to reapply your whole makeup again. So this spray, oh my gosh, not an ad or anything, but that is revolutionary. Especially if you just need to like quickly spray your shoulders or spray your your neck oh, that's one place where if I'm going to catch the sun it's always on my neck or always kind of like on my nose so a little reapplication. so that's often in there I often have a few hair bands which or, or hair ties they're always good to or hair bubbles whatever you like to call them I feel like there's a lot of different names for hair bubbles or hair ties or hair bands um anyway or hair elastics I could go on all day um so I always have a few of those I always like to bring some lip gloss with me as well or some sort of lip product because especially in the winter get quite dry lips or in the summer actually when it's quite dry just feel like it's always good to have moisturized lips I always like to bring some gum with me as well or some sort of mints have nice fresh breath I always like to bring some headphones with me as well because you never know when you just need to you know if you're bored or need to listen to something or I don't know so I always have like my string headphones that's one one thing that I don't think you'll ever catch me buying is a pair of um the small airpods I do <laughs> I do have the big ones because I use them for editing and going away and they're very comfy and working out and that kind of thing so I use those a lot but small airpods I don't know if I could ever bring myself to buy them because they are expensive but also I just know I will be that person that will, number one, always forget to bring them with me. Number two, always forget to charge them. And number three, I just have a pair with a string, which I know is going to be very retro. And some people are going to be like, oh, she thinks she's so cool. She has like the old headphones. She's trying to like, I don't know, be all retro and that kind of thing. But no, they are just, they're just useful. You don't have to worry about trying to connect the Bluetooth to your phone. You just shove it in there, plug it in. Bob's your uncle, all good. Um, so I like to bring them with me. I also, I think I did like a little video on this um, when I did like a um, Christmas present idea last year, but I have like a little Fairfax and Favour purse and it has like ever, like all lots of little bits and bobs that I need. So I keep my ID and cards and um, I do have an Apple AirTag in there as well because I, this is turning into a Esme's favourite things at the moment. Maybe that should be a new podcast episode. It'll be like my favourites at the moment because there are some things that um, I absolutely love 
and I just find it so useful. And I could, you know, I could live with, I could live without my Apple AirTag, but would I maybe forget where I've put my purse or my keys quite a lot? Yes, because I am that person. Um, especially like I'm quite good, you know, when I come to work, I know where I put my keys and when I get into the house, I know where I put my keys. But if I'm anywhere else, if I go around a friend's house, you best believe that I will definitely misplace where I put my keys somewhere. So anyway, um, but yeah, Apple AirTags. I have Apple AirTag on everything. <laughs> Just um, tag everything, make sure I don't lose it. So I have that in my little purse. Um, I have painkillers because I am that person that I... It's, 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 I promise, I promise, I promise I take drugs responsibly. But um, I do get a bit of period pain sometimes, so that isn't great. Or just if you have a headache or that kind of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a paracetamol, ibuprofen kind of gal. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Anyway, um, you never know. Uh, what else? I think that's the, they're the main things that I can think of in my little purse. I do have a little, um, oh, deodorant. That's quite a good thing. Or like body spray. You never know when you just need a little, little freshen up. They are the main things. I also have a, um, my favorite hair leave-in conditioner spray thing that's also in my little trug in my um dressing room so yeah they're the things i can think of at the moment <laughs> let me know if you would like to hear a whole video of me saying what my favorite things are at the moment because that i feel like that is very old school youtube anybody my age probably grew up watching zoella or zoe sug on youtube and she's i used to love watching her fa her favorites or she used to do like empties as well or empty hauls where basically she would go through all the products that she that are now empty that she'd used up and that she would be rebuying because she liked them so I don't know I always find those kind of videos interesting but yeah they're my t they're my top my top favorite things apple air tags <laughs> spray on factor 50 sun cream over makeup and what was the last one <laughs> bringing bring in other bits that are useful with you along as I said before I I am the f person in the friendship group where I am the walking pharmacy like if anybody needs something if anybody needs a plaster oh plasters are a good thing to do especially if you're wearing your summer heels or sandals and you get a blister you don't want to you don't want to be walking around with that rubbing um but yes on that note I think <laughs> I think I might have been waffling along enough as it is oh what how about we finish i'm just checking my little notes app on my phone how about we finish talking about my trip to ireland even though it was probably the quickest trip to ireland saying that i think have i done have we done ireland in a day or have we always had an overnight i think we have done yeah we have done ireland in a day so this was wasn't quite the quickest trip but we were in ireland for 24 hours i did a meet and greet over there and i had so much fun meeting all of you everybody was really really lovely um I always love meeting you guys and like seeing like your horses or your lone ponies or that kind of thing. And there was this one lady and she showed me her horse and it honestly, it looked like it had eyeliner on. It had blue eyes like Mickey and she showed me the picture and she even had like a little tattoo on her arm as well of her horse and it, oh, it was very cute. So yeah, just wanted to say thank you to everybody who came to that meet and greet. It was really lovely to see you all and everyone was so kind. So yeah, looking forward to seeing more of you with Duke at World Horse Welfare and also at the London um, Longines Global Champions Tour. So there we go. On that note, I'm going to finish it off there. I really hope you enjoyed. Hopefully I will have some more fun summer stories to keep you updated on, although I think this week looks like it's going to rain. So there we go. Anyway, on that note, I will see you all next week. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Red Post for sponsoring the podcast and I'll see you all next time. Bye.